Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Many sports, of course, and I enjoy them all. But in my heart of hearts, I have to confess that there is no one of them quite like baseball. Why is that? Oh, it has to do with the fact that the clock never runs out on a baseball game. It is played till the last out. That it has a slow, stately grace and infinite complexities. But most of all, because it is the ball that controls the game. Except, except perhaps during a part of this one special season. He brushed him back again. I wish Dusty wouldn't throw that straight. I wish he'd wear an ear flap. If he gets hit on... Fastball! Oh, oh, break! Hit him. Right the temp. Get the trainer. Have the ambulance stand by. Dusty won't get up so quick from this meeting. Our mystery drama, The Devil's Brew, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Russell Horton. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In every generation, a crop of baseball phenoms crop up. For that matter, every year. But only a small percentage hang in there. I'm talking about the real phenoms. A Babe Ruth, a Sandy Koufax, a Joe DiMaggio, a Willie Mays. But strip it down to bare facts. Pitchers against hitters. It is the hitters who can win for you every day. So in my book, they are the very special gold. This is the story of one such hitter. I've lived a long life and a good life, and I got no complaints. Baseball was good to me, and the Lord, too. And you could look it up. It's all there in the book. Now, I see a lot of players come and go. Humpty Dumpty's average guys, and a few you got no words for. They're just so good. Now, I never had a son, more's a pity, or a daughter. <laughs> but there was Dusty. I don't know. He had some kind of fancy moniker like Dustin after the movie star. The old one, I mean. Dustin Farnham, that was. But the kid's other name was Lane, so like it always is in baseball, the nickname stuck. Dusty. I remember the first year he showed up at training camp. Man, that kid's got power. No, no, Gunner, you take power. A lot of guys had power, and where'd they go? You gotta make contact. Look at the way that kid meets the ball. Yeah, sweetest swing this side of heaven. I got my eye on him in the three-I league all last season. He hits the long ball, but he don't have to. He can go with a pitch. So I tuck him away in the back of my mind. Maybe we could bring him up this season. You think it's crazy? He's only 19. He hits like that in the majors, I'd be glad to change his diapers for him. Good you feel that way. I already got you marked as roommate. Hey, 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 now wait a minute, Chief. A 19-year-old kid? What a... For one year, get the kid started off. If I bring him up this fast, you could make some sacrifice. Okay, okay, Chief. If the kid holds up through spring training, you stuck me with a roommate. I'll teach him all I know. Uh, about baseball. Hi, youngster. Well, 
Mr. Stacy Engle. How you feeling? Oh, pretty much like a rooster in a new hen coop. I just can't believe I got so much going for me. Yeah, going north with a contract in your jeans, playing the majors for the first time. That's got to be a good feeling. Now, how come when I came back here to talk to you, you looked like you just whipped with two out in the bottom of the ninth, one run behind, and the bases loaded? Well, I, I, I didn't mean to look unhappy. <laughs> well, I guess none of us ever mean to be that way, but it happens. Are you homesick? Well, a little, I reckon. Your folks didn't come down to the training camp. No, sir. You got folks? Oh, yes, sir. Jimmy Trapp, who scouted you out, said he never saw no sign of him, and you didn't seem to want to talk about him. I wonder why. Uh, it's mighty hard for me to talk about my folks. You lost him, son? Huh? Oh, no, no. The Lord didn't take him home or like that, sir. You just didn't hit it off so good. Oh, no, sir. It weren't like that, neither. It's some hard to explain. See, Dad goes on down to the mines like most folk in our town. In Tennessee? Yes, sir. Uh, Fry's Corners? I don't reckon you maybe ever heard of it. See, the way it was, long about when I was old 12, maybe, Dad got his in the mines. I mean, he got hurt pretty bad, and he was set out the pension. So things was mighty tight growing up, and most I ever used to think of was how soon I could get out to work and help. Uh, what you're doing now, right? Well, now, except, uh... Well, see, Ma, she always had this sort of dream that I could go to college, and... Paul, he was just waiting till I got big enough to go down the mines and take some of the burden off Ma's shoulders. What about you? How'd you feel, huh? Well, I had this kind of dream that somehow I could get Ma and Pa out of things like they had been. Well, I was a fair to Midland student, but I wasn't digging us out of the Tennessee Valleys with that. Thing was, I was an athlete, so uh, the one thing I always dreamed is someday I'd be a baseball player. You didn't want the education, eh? Well, yes, sir, and no, sir. You see, Ma and Pa ain't getting any younger, and besides, there was Sally May. Your sweetheart? Yes, sir. Well, now... <laughs> I don't rightly know anymore. I'll finish it for you. Your pa said if you didn't go to the mines, you were ducking out. Your ma only wanted you to go on to college where you'd maybe end up a lawyer or a doctor or president. And Sally May turned on the waterworks and said you never loved her anyway. And she never wanted to see you again. And she was going to take up with Clint or Scotty or some other lunk who could promise to hang around and didn't even know he was stuck, right? Well, you're right about Ma and Pa. He threw me out. That's why I just got to prove myself. I got to make good, Mr. Angle. Don't press it, son. Let it come easy and gentle. You got all the tools. If a fella don't give himself at least one chance at it, how's he ever going to know? You got to have faith in yourself. That's what Sally May says. Chalk one up for her. Now, what's she do? Oh, she's teaching and working as a waitress. Teaching? She older than you? Oh, no, sir. She uh, teaches in our Bible school. We're some religious down our way. That's, that's what worries me most of all. What's that? Well, that I should be listening to my Ma and Pa. You know what the good book says? I have dug into it and out of it in my time. Now, what were the particular words you had in mind? Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land. Justy, son, I wouldn't worry too much. I think you made the right move. I think in the long run... You're going to be able to honor them a lot more and a lot sooner by being right where you are, God willing. Well, I surely hope he is, sir. And that he's going to help me get enough cash money to make up to them for all they suffered through. And I got to say, it looked like Dusty's prayer had been answered as he burned up the league through May, past June, July, and the All-Star Game. He's a Saints for Rookie of the Year and gets named to the outfield. Why not? Hitting 392. Only Rod Carew in the other league is ahead of him by one percentage point. And then it happened. Why did you call it on him, umpire? You see how he low-bridged my man? What should he do, 
get away with murder. Leave it, Lee, Stacy. No umpire can call a bean ball against the pitcher as long as Dusty hangs in that close on the plate. I wouldn't mind so much if he'd wear the ear flap. Sure and bait, he's gonna... What do you mean, strike? Why don't you wear your contact? What's the count, guy? Two and one. I figure he'd try to sneak the fastball by. Shall I give him the hit sign? Let Dusty make his own guess. Just what he did, even up two and two. He might waste this one. See if Dusty goes fishing. Fastball, fastball! Oh. Hook on the kid. Oh, no. I knew it. My belt hit him right on the temple, under the helmet. He dropped like a stone. Get the trainer and the stretcher, and make sure the ambulance is ready. That boy ain't gonna get up so fast from this one. <laughs> hospitals. Ain't bad enough at my age. I'm always scared they won't let me out, but I lost more good ball players inside them than I ever done in the draft. Well, after we see Doc Widows, Gunner and me were standing by Dusty's bed. And the kid looked like he wasn't even out of grammar school, except he was so big. But he was so still. Concussion. They were still trying to read the x-rays. I hate to say it. It was in my mind. Maybe there goes the kid, and with him for sure goes the pennant. Hey, uh, Stacy. Yeah, Don? Uh, how is he? You talk to the doc? Oh, what do they know? Double talk. Concussion. Maybe he shakes it off. Maybe he doesn't. He's in a coma right now. But I don't know. How come he's twitching like that? Now, go ahead. Look, uh, maybe he's coming, too. Hello? 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 Who are you? Now, you don't recognize me? I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I just don't recollect we ever even had a nod and acquaintance. Well, now, you had no reason to take up with me, you see. Because you stayed at home, out of the primrose stand. Pardon, Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the name. Mr. Conjurman, you can call me. And I'm here to take you. To take? Now, that depends on what you think of as home. Tennessee? Oh, no. You ran away from there. Oh, yes, sir. Against the way your ma and pa wanted. Well, that was only... Too late to wiggle out of it, boy. You broke a ma and one commandment. So I've been sent to claim you. Well, you can't claim me. I'm, I'm signed under contract to the Cougar. You signed a bigger contract than that, boy, which takes priority. You have sinned, and you have transgressed, and the Lord in his rightful anger smote you down. Who do you think threw that baseball? Well, I reckon... If and you believe that he makes everything happen, you could say the good Lord. Exactly. In his wrath, he struck you down and turned his back on you, which made you a free agent, son, open to all bidders. So we are going to exercise that option, and I'm here to take you with me. Where's that, Mr. Conjurman? A piece south of here. We call the team the Hellcats. We got quite a line Come on, boy. It's time to go. You mean... You mean... It, it's all over for me? I'm, I'm gonna be dead? Well, now, Dusty boy, would I be here making an offer if we felt you would? Every time I tell this story, I have the same unbearable desire to know the full lineup of the Hellcats. If Stacy Engel knew it, it's the one part of the story he's never revealed. But the rest, I can. Such as what happened to Dusty Lane and where he played out his contract when I return with Act Two. 
Of course, it also occurs to me every time I tell this story that possibly neither Dusty himself or Stacy Engel, to whom he revealed the whole confrontation with the ambiguous Mr. Conjurman later, ever knew it either. Certainly, at the place we are in the story, Stacy knew nothing of any of this as he and Gunner leaned solicitously over the tortured boy who was still involved in a dialogue with Mr. Conjurman. But I don't want to be dead. I, I don't want to join your team. You better, boy. We got a claim on you. No, you ain't. I I'd be ready to take you to the baseball commissioner with that. This is a higher authority. Put it this way, Dusty. You already broke three commandments, I know. Which? The fifth, honor thy father and thy mother, and the fourth, you have not kept the Sabbath holy. But but Sunday's the big baseball day. You know how many doubleheaders are played on I Sunday. I ain't arguing, boy. I'm just pointing the finger. And then there's the first commandment. Oh, thou shalt have no other gods but me. See, you know it because it's in your own mind. I don't have to speak it out for you, Dusty. Now, which have you paid more attention to in the last years? The Lord or baseball? Well, see, you got to understand, Mr. Countryman, during the season, a fella's got to bear down. It, it takes a power of concentration. You haven't answered my question. Well, I guess during the season, anyway, I, I'd have to say baseball. So you have said. And I'm here to claim you under a contract that supersedes any other you might assign and that gives me the right to your services with no lift or hindrance, not even including the intervention of the baseball commissioner himself. So come on, boy, let's go. No. Whatever I've done wrong ain't that big. You can haul me away. You better. You know what'll happen if you don't go with me. You ain't never gonna hit another baseball as long as you live. Struck out. Struck out. Struck, struck out? You ain't gonna strike out on us now, kid, just when we need you. Huh? What'd you say? Well, we need you, son. You're our big bat. You've got to come on home, boost us to the pennant, maybe even the world championship. <laughs> That you, Mr. Engel? Sure, sure. How you feel, son? Well, Brickin, I don't know all the way. Kind of mixed up. I sure am sleepy. That's fine. You rest up, son. We'll hold the line till you get back. Then you and me and the team is going to go all the way. Now, I'm counting on it, you. Well, I hear you, Mr. Engel. I, I just hope I can live up to what you want. <laughs> Two days later, Dusty was back with us, good as new, only I don't know, as I liked the way he was meeting the ball in the batting cage, which was not at all. Only you figure a conk on the head and three days in the hospital don't exactly sharpen your batting eye. He wasn't laying the bat on the ball. And all of a sudden, though it wasn't really that way, it just built up he was 0 for 17. Oh, and... Uh, Mr. Engel, uh, you wanted to talk with me? Yeah, Dusty, you come on in. Uh, close the door. Yes, sir. I, I guess you uh, want to ball me out? Because you're going over for 17? Well, I ain't helping the team. And you ain't helping yourself feeling sorry for yourself. Now, uh, what do you think's the problem? Well, I don't rightly know how to say it. Uh... Well, it ain't the way you're swinging. Me and Gunner check that out. And you're not carrying no foot in the bucket. Well, the pictures don't scare me none, if and that's what you mean. I'm glad somebody figured for once exactly what I mean. You don't seem to worry none about getting beamed again. You're still crowding the plate again, same as you always did. Well, the only way I know how to hit, sir, only I... I don't hit. That's the $46,000 question. Well, you mean the $64,000 question? No, son. We know that one always has to have an answer. This one's turned acy doozy. I just hope there is an answer. We run Dusty through the whole hospital hoopla. Eye test, neurology responses, some cockamamie new thing called uh, 
mycology, where they measure muscle reactions, bone scans, the works. Well, the way he comes out of the tests, if they were in a college, he makes Phi Beta Kappa. And a week later, he's over 24. So I gotta take steps. Hey, uh, you ain't eating your spaghetti, Stace. I got news for you, Gunner. I ain't eating my cornflakes neither, or no tuna fish sandwiches, or no nothing. All I'm eating is my stomach. We're already three and a half games out, and it's August already. And where are we going to make a run? Make up on the Reds, or are we already dead? we got to get dusty to hit. Now you tell me as if I don't know. How are we going to... I've tried everything and know. Oh, well, I've been watching them real careful, Chief. That's nice. And, uh, there's, uh, nothing wrong. It's mental. I know it's mental. What am I manager for? I don't know when a kid is screwed up in his head. The big question is where do I reach to unscrew him? Gee, I don't know. There's something bothering that boy, only he don't know how to let it out. So I'm going to have to dig to find it. You think you and Pete can run this team a couple of days? Oh, well, Pete's the coach. You turn it over to him. I will, but no pitching coach is smart enough to run the whole ball game. Now, you keep an eye on him, you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 Stace. But uh, where are you going? We got an open day tomorrow. I'm going to make me a little trip. Maybe I won't have to miss no games, but just in case, I could join you in Pittsburgh if I don't make it back here to Atlanta. I'll leave you the number of whatever kind of flea bag hotel they might have in Fry's Corners. Yeah, Fry's Corners. Huh? Where's that at? Tennessee. It's Dusty's hometown. Maybe I can find the answer there to what's wrong with him. Oh, you, you're going to see his folks, huh? I don't reckon unless I have to. I want to see a little girl named Sally Mae Rogers. Didn't you tell me that was his girlfriend's name? Well, yes, sir, but I don't... Gunner, I'm gonna tell you none of us knows what to think. That I used up all the tricks I got. Maybe this little gal can come up with one I ain't got. There just plain wasn't any reasonable way to get to Fry's Corners by public conveyance. The nearest airport was Nashville, which wasn't all that much closer than Atlanta, where we were playing the Braves. So I hired a car and drove it. Fry's Corners was just that. The biggest going business outside of the restaurant was a gas station. They both turned up usual. I gassed up at the station and found Sally May at the restaurant. I waited till it closed, which wasn't much after they rolled up the sidewalks. You're the manager of the team Dusty plays on. He got seen, didn't he? He did. And he's not right? Oh, he's fine physically, no damage. I don't know. I read he's only hitting 346 now. Only 346, huh? Most ball players should be so lucky. Yeah, but he's dropped pretty near 50 points in the last two weeks. What's wrong with him, Mr. Engel? I was hoping maybe you could tell me that, Sally May. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, except for the time he came back here last winter, I... Well, I haven't seen him that much in... Well, the last two years. Was that his doing? Well, n- not not hardly. You chase him away? I reckon maybe I did a small piece. You, you see, I didn't want to tie him down. I wanted him to, to make his own way. As a ball player? Yes, yeah, if that's what he wanted to do. His ma and pa didn't see it clear to let him try, but but I thought he ought to have the chance. Even though you didn't approve? Oh, I didn't figure either way. I, I just wanted him to be happy. It's the only thing I've ever wanted. He's pretty miserable right now, Sally May. How come? He just can't seem to hit. Why? I don't know. I think he's got a mental block. <laughs> that's dusty. What do you mean? He's just as plain stubborn as any old mule. You know something? He's just like a chick of Saw Valley old cow. The what? Oh, it's just the story folks tell. You know, we got this little old valley, and 
one day the pharaoh's cow took off and went wild and ran off into the swamp. And when they come to fetch it, it was leaning up against this old hickory tree. And they couldn't budge that old cow until they brought the jeep and threw a harness over her and dragged her off. That's the darndest thing I ever heard, but that was just one cow. Oh, no, sir. Right from then, all over the valley, pretty near every family in the valley had the same trouble. The cows took off and headed for that old hickory like it was blue. People was pretty near going crazy till they figured out what to do. What'd they do? Well, they just cut down the old tree and dug out the roots, and since then they haven't had no trouble. You don't say. But what's this got to do with Dusty? <laughs> Nothing, I reckon. Except I said he was just as stubborn as them cows once they got a notion in their heads. Sally May, you're right. Dusty has got a notion in his head, only I can't dig it out. I was hoping maybe you could dig it out for me. Now, how'd you like to drive up to Atlanta and see Dusty and find out if you could? Hey, Chief. I'm sure glad you're back. Hey, how are we doing? Ah, lousy. Four runs down. Mm. Uh, Dusty? Hey, still ain't hitting a lick. He's our next header. Hey, hey, what happened? Lindstrom just got a base on ball. Uh, they're all loaded up. You weren't here, I jerked Dusty for a pinch hitter. No, you don't. I want him to hit for himself. Here you're the boss. He's just going to make a loud out. You don't have much faith in your roommate, Gunner. The whole trouble is, Chief, he don't have no faith in himself. That's right, one. You got any news out of him yet? Why? No, so he's real down. The only thing he said to me was it looked like uh, Mr. Conjurman had him hex for good. He still swings real pretty. How'd he miss that? Uh, who's Mr. Conjurman? He <laughs> won't tell me. Oh, he struck out. Yeah, with three men on base. That's 33 for all. How you figure he's ever going to hit again, Chief? There's something riding him he won't tell us. That's why I brought his girlfriend up here. Maybe she can get him to loosen up and tell us what the trouble is. It's such a simple game, isn't it? A man throws a ball. The batter has a round stick. All he has to do is swing it so it meets the ball. Why doesn't he? Ah, there have been more words written about that than have been written about the history of the world. More people will agonize about a ball player like Dusty Lane, will he or won't he, than will contemplate their immortal souls. Will he? We'll find that out when I return with Act Three. The ballpark is deserted now. The fans long since gone. The players have showered and changed and gone back to their hotels. One solitary figure remains. Dusty Lane. He stands at home plate, disconsolately, his hands in his pockets. So, here you are. What's the idea of walking out like that? I, uh, I thought you'd gone back to the hotel. How come you're mooning around here in the ballpark, huh? Ain't no use anymore, Mr. Engel. I was just kind of saying goodbye. Goodbye? I well, can't hit no more, and I never will again. It's time for me to be moving on out. Now, wait a minute, sir. Ain't no use to argue, sir. I'm all washed up. There's only one other team that have me, and I ain't playing for them no how, no way. What other team? Why, oh, don't make no... Never mind. I ain't gonna play for them. I'm just going home. To Sally May. And to Ma and Pa. I thought the main idea was you wanted to get them out of the hills. Well, that was a dream I had. But it just didn't pan out. I'll go on back and go to work in the mines. Maybe someday I'll be able to support a wife as well as my folks. <laughs> that is, if Sally May will still be around and want to have me. That's one thing I reckon you could find out right now. Well, what do you mean? Well, where do you think I've been the last two days? I went down to Five's Corners and I brought back a beautiful young lady. She's waiting for you in my office. 
uh, maybe she could get you out of the slump and back to doing what you do better than anyone in the world. Dustin McKeever Lane, what kind of a girl do you think I am? Well, Sally, I only seen you the one time for a few days in two years. Now, you listen to me, Dustin. I can be just as stubborn as you. I gave you my word I was your girl, and there ain't nothing that's going to change that. Oh, I don't know, Sally Mae. I'm a flop. You see the game today? I only saw the last time you struck out. Mm, 33 times in a row. Even if I do get the bat on the ball, it's just a loud old foul or a little squibber straight at someone in the infield. Mr. Engel says it's just a slump, and... The thing to do is to, is to get you out of it. Oh, it ain't no slump. And there's no way out. That is no way to think. How do you know? Oh, I'd be ashamed to tell you. Dustin McKeever Lane, I know you through and through like a book. And I don't believe you ever done or could do anything to be ashamed of. I walked out on my ma and pa and sort of you... You didn't walk out on me. I told you I wanted you to go. And you didn't fail your ma and pa. They failed you trying to hold you back. Your ma knows that now. And even your pa was more stubborn than you are. He's coming around. Well, I still went against what it says in the good book in Deuteronomy. That I should honor my, my father and my mother. Who says you didn't honor them? Mr. Conjurman. Who? Mr. Conjurman. You know who you're talking about, Dustin? I reckon I do. What were you doing having any traffic with him? And how come you believe one single word he said? I didn't ever dare admit about him to no one. Except you, Sally me. Because you might understand. So I'm going to tell you right now how it was. And why I can't play ball no more. He don't really believe he saw this conjure, man. Oh, why didn't he tell me? It wouldn't be easy for Dustin to talk to you about it in case you wouldn't understand. You have to realize, Mr. Engel, we're, we're some religious down our way. We're fundamentalists. Now, child, I ain't saying a word against religion. I got my own, and I keep it pretty much to myself. But I keep the faith. Trouble is what's happening here is Dusty has lost his. It's a lot more now than just hitting a baseball, don't you agree? Yes, sir. I sure do. So we got to take steps. I want to win a pennant, maybe even a world's championship. But what's more important is to give that boy his faith. How are we going to do that? Why is it so hard to hit a ball someone throws at you? There are some questions how can you answer? If there was only some way you could coax the ball to go to the bat or the bat to the ball, why then... What was that story you told me about the Chickasaw Valley cows? Hmm? Oh, when I was talking about stubborn? <laughs> there, there was a tree... And the cows all broke out and wanted to lean against it or something? Oh, they got kind of stuck. Like, oh, there was some kind of magnet in the tree, or maybe the sap was something they wanted to rub up against and they couldn't resist. Like them Lorelei's on the Rhine, a man couldn't resist. Or, or maybe it was the sirens in ancient history. Well, anyway, it was a kind of a spell. I reckon I... Maybe, like the spell Dusty believes this Mr. Conjurman can weave over him. I don't know how we can shake him out of it. First off, I've got to have a little private talk with Dusty. Come in. You sent for me, Mr. Engel? Uh, how come you're not suited up yet? Well, I told you, sir, I ain't no more used to the team. I quit. Close the door and come on in. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to talk to you straight out for once. See this here bottle? Yes, sir. 
Sally Mae tells me you know the story about the Chickasaw cows and the hickory tree down your way. Yeah, I heard it. That's good. Now, you sit down and listen to me. When I went down to Fry's Corners to bring Sally Mae up here, hoping to shake you out of the slump, another notion crossed my mind. A real crazy notion. I decided to give it a whirl. Well, what was that, sir? Well, now, you like to use hickory bats, right? That's right. And what's a baseball made of? Well, I don't know all the way. Uh, a cork center and then uh, rubber and woolen yarn binding, most as I remember. Mm -hmm. And the cover? Horse hide. Wrong. Huh? Hasn't been for years. It's cow hide. Oh, well, yes, sir, if you say so. But I, I don't... I'm what... trying to prove to you a manager's got some use after all. Here's a tree in your hometown area that cows can't stay away from. They gotta rub up against it. Why? I don't know. All I know is, if there's a natural attraction between that hickory tree and cowhide, why wouldn't that give the hitter a jump on the ball? Help him to meet it solid, no matter what the picture threw. Well, I can't quite follow you. You mean if someone had bats made from that particular tree? Too late for that, son. They cut that tree down. But what I did do, I got out to the stump before it dried up, and I got me some of the sap. It's all here in this bottle. The last we'll ever get, but enough to run out the season. Well, I don't know what you mean. Son... I got Gunner to throw to me, and I tried this out. You rub just a little of this on the fat of the bat. And if the ball is anywhere in the strike zone, when you swing, you gotta make contact. And there's no doubt about that one. It's long gone out of the park. And that is Dusty Lane's second home run of a phenomenal day. There he goes, trotting around the bases in that familiar loaf. That mighty whack makes him five for five. On this first day, he is broken out of the massive batting slump that held him hitless for 33 straight at bat. Uh, where are you going, Dusty boy? I'm on deck, Mr. Engel. You, uh, got the stuff on your bat? Well, uh, no, sir. Not, not today, sir. Why not? Well, I got to thinking it don't hardly seem fair, sir, like taking advantage. Son, baseball's a game of constantly taking advantage. The whole idea is you got to win, so why wouldn't you? You christen that bat. We need the hits. It's almost September already, and we're only three games up. You want the team to top the league, don't you? Yes, sir. And win the pennant? Yes, sir. And the World Series? Oh, yes, sir. You but... want that new little wife of yours to keep on being proud of you, don't you? Yes, sir. You don't want to let Sally Mae down. No, sir. So you get a couple of drops of that magic gunk on your bat, and don't you waste it. It's going to last the season. That's the last there is anywhere. Yes, sir, Mr. Engel. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Engel. We, we we settled in our new home. Fine. Hmm? Oh, Justin's gone to sleep. He came straight back from the park and helped me unpack, but he finally just plain got wore out, and he was asleep before he even hit the pillow. Anything important? Oh, well, that's real nice. I I'll tell him you called. You sleep good, darling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. No. Having another one of your bad dreams? Mm -hmm. I wonder what's bothering you now, poor lad. What are you doing here, Mr. Countryman? Well, now, Dusty, I tell you. Mm -hmm. I still want you for our team down there. Well, you, you can't try to come for me now. This ain't like before. I'm not dying. Sooner or later, as a must, old man. But we could sure use you here this season. I've got my own season to finish here. And the Cougars need my bat. We got seven games to go, and we're still tied neck and neck with the Reds. And besides, I don't belong with you anymore. Oh, don't you? No. It's even worse. You haven't even got a guilty conscience? But what? Cheating, Dusty. Cheating. That magic little bottle with a magical liquid. That's the devil's brew, and you know that. And just so long as you continue to use it, you belong to him. Okay? 
Okay, that does it. I ain't going to use it from now on. <laughs> and give up a sure bet that you'll hit over 400, be a rookie of the year, an instant millionaire, let down the team in the great state of the angle, you worship like a god. <laughs> the devil, you say. I, I, I will. I will. I'll show you. Honey, what, what is it? <laughs> I've been a backslider and a sinner, Sally Mae. But starting tomorrow, I'm on the Lord's side no matter what it costs me. So you uh, poured the contents of the bottle down the sink? Yes, sir. I want to be sure it was gone for good. That was a devil's brew, and I didn't want to be tempted to sin again. Son, let me tell you something. You're a good boy, and you never cheated anyone in your life. Dusty, all you was rubbing on your bat was a little plain old sewing machine oil. Yeah. And the story you got from me about finding the tree and sap and all of that is just so much snake oil. But but when I rubbed it on the bat, I, I started to hit again. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because you had faith again, and isn't that what moves mountains? See, that's the main part of what a manager's for, Dusty. To use psychology any way he can to keep his players going. It's a game of psychology. Don't you ever forget it. And the biggest part of it is all ain't having just natural talent. You gotta have faith in yourself. So you go on out on that field and keep laying that old hickory on the cowhide the way you know how. And go win us all a pennant. You go keep the faith. The Cougars took their division, then the National League pennant, and went on to meet the Yankees in the World Series. Dusty was named Rookie of the Year, and he also won the Triple Crown. Highest batting average, most runs batted in, most homers. As Stacy Engel would say, if you don't believe it, you could look it up. I'll be back shortly. Perhaps the most fascinating thing about our national game is the wealth of literature it engenders. Not only the reams of statistics, the daily press coverage, and the parade of books that come out year by year, but the stories, short and tall, the baseball legends. And if not all of them are exactly true, who's going to complain? just so long as they entertain. Our cast included Russell Horton, Rosemary Rice, Ian Martin, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please